Welcome back to Blatantly Honest with Michaela Nichols. Today, I sat down with Oscar Castan. He's a host, actor, and influencer best known for his Young Artist Academy nominated role as host of the Gen Z Buzz. Oscar is a series regular host for the new children's streaming show, Next Gen News. Today, we talk about what it means to grow up in a world of social media and navigating friendships as a teen. Welcome, Oscar. It's crazy, like, too. I love having young people on, like yourself. Um, how, how old are you? I don't even know how old you are. Oh, well, my birthday is passed. I'm actually 15 right now. 15. Oh my God. Happy belated birthday. Thank you. Wow. 15. Oh my God. So what is, let's talk about the mind of a 15 year old. So you're almost 16. You're not quite getting your driver's license yet. And I don't know, like, what are you looking forward to? How's school with like all this COVID stuff? School's actually um, pretty good. Um, well, you know, since recently when me getting into high school, I got into like a college program. So once I'm done with high school, I'm done with college. But yeah, people say your high school days are the hardest days, but I see it as a challenge. But there's a lot of fun stuff that can happen. You can meet a lot of amazing people that will actually just influence your life for probably your whole lifetime. Oh, my goodness. Wow. So you're kind of dueling like that dual enrollment thing? Yeah. Wow. 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 OK, so when you're done with high school what do you want to do and done with college because i guess it's like the same thing what is like next right after that mm, well i mean me and my friends have been having a plan you know we all move in to like a place near a beach in la you know just have a fun time find some close jobs you know and just keep hiring up because you know getting a house and apartment at like that age is pretty hard but we'll be able to do it wow oh my god so much fun i i have a lot of good friends like that and i'm like we had like the same kind of goal and not to like discourage you from your goal, but like then my friend, my one went to like medical school and the other one and I'm like, guys, like we had a plan. Um, uh, <laughs> so then no, that's cool. I, uh, I hope you and your buddies are able to do that. So Oscar, I really kind of want to pick your brain about social media because obviously, you know, you're a host, an actor and an influencer. I'm very curious to like understand your whole perception about being an influencer and what that means, because I feel like that word means so many different things. So as a 15 year old, what does the word influencer mean to you? And how does it apply to you? Well, with influencer, I kind of see it as um, a sign really more like a lot of people will look up to you. Some as like a hero, like a model, role model, stuff like that. Yeah, I feel like the word influencer can mean so many different things. Um, you know, you yes. see like, TikTok influencers and Instagram influencers. I mean, do you think all influencers are good influencers? Well, yes. Well, yeah, but there's all like, there could be some like bad ones, but I wouldn't say necessarily bad, but everyone has a different way of teaching, you know, but like, you know, we've seen some cases of like um, some people accidentally do bad things, but that's what kind of is being an influencer. You can't mess up. You got to be good because a lot of people will look up to you. Definitely. I, uh, I like, I like your answer for that, but I'm like, Oh, like, I feel like I've heard of so many influencers that have just like done the wrong thing. And I think that there's a lot of like bad role models out there. So how do you, you know, as someone who's really active on social media, how do you avoid like either following the bad influencer, not that they're bad influencers. I don't want to like pigeonhole them influencers that have made the wrong choice. How do you, not follow in their footsteps well i mean i kind of like take a little i only take the good bits of it like you can't necessarily just copy somebody everyone and influencers always have their own version of it mm -hmm. it's not necessarily the same thing like yeah people could do gaming some people can do tiktoks modeling but they all each put their own spin into it not necessarily copying it so that's why you know like yeah they can copy it but like they don't copy about almost everything. So like, even if like an influencer I looked up to did something bad, I only ever like copy the good things about him, never sh strive to go to the bad side, but only stay on the good side. Definitely. No, that's good. And uh, it's very evident that you have a good head on your shoulders and you're like, all right, I'm going to do everything as best I can. Um, Cause sometimes I can, you know, I think it can be hard. Like you have all this pressure of social media and like, how can I be the best version of myself and how can I make people like me? I mean, do you ever struggle with like your own sense of identity or do you know like who you are wholeheartedly? Well, I mean, cause I kind of bring my own self to social media. 
like, you know, with everybody else, like sometimes they bring a different character, like um, different characters, for instance, on how they act. I mean, like, they, for example, some person would be really nice, but they could play and they'd be like a bully character, like a role play for a YouTuber. And, you know, some people like, like, oh, but yeah. So like with identity and stuff, like sometimes, you know, people get popular for things that they didn't necessarily want to get popular for. Like maybe a duet and then they'll get known as a person who basically had that identity of, oh, they did this. I kind of like to see the identity of something that you would want to do and basically who you are and not something that you're labeled as just because of something that you got very popular because you want people to like you for you, not just because of one thing. Definitely. Yeah, well said. You definitely want people to like you for you and not like whether it's copying or what have you. So let yes. me ask you this. What do you think of the word millennial? Millennial. Hmm. I think of the the good old, the like the good old days of the internet. It was like the, it was like the old West. It's a lot of stuff undiscovered and a lot of stuff known. But yeah, I just, I just see millennials as you know, they were the OGs of the internet, you know, when MySpace and YouTube barely started. So yeah. yeah. Great answer. So you, you're what, Gen Z, I think? Yeah. Oh my God. Okay. So explain to me like Gen Z, like what are the interests of Gen Z? If you don't know, that's fine. But like, how mm. would you define Gen Z? Well, Gen Z is a lot of things. I mean, there's a lot of people who are Gen Z. I mean, like what part of me, Gen Z is, you know, influencer, but like me in real life, I'm more of like, you know, just a regular old weeb kid. But yeah, there's like a ton of people with Gen Z, you know, there we got the TikTokers, the influencers, the Instagrammers. There's a lot of things that Gen Z can do and, you know, what they do, they are big and like influence and stuff. But yeah, it's kind of hard to define what Gen Z really is, but it's a good sign of hope. Yeah, Something for like sure. That. Do you think that like a lot of the older generation is like really quick to judge like Gen Z? Because I feel like I've heard so many things like, oh my God, like they can't put their phone down or this or that. Like, yeah. that, that's, that's a true thing. But, you know, we just, because um, people just got to get used to it. But I mean, with every generation, they got to get used to something because sooner or later, that thing you know, it's going to get old and um, out of the old and here comes in the new. So, yeah. And at 15, like you have a career and you have stuff that you're doing. And that's fantastic because a lot of people that are young are like, well, I don't want, I don't know what I want to do with my life. Like, I don't know what direction I'm going. What made you want to get into hosting? Hosting, um, hmm. you know, that's a, that's a good thing. Cause people really, they like, they can want to do this stuff originally. Like, for example, I think with like um, Bill Nye, you want it to be like a, uh, he wanted to be like a, like a musician or something, but like what you want to be in life always changes. I mean, how I started was um, I just wanted to be a regular old gaming YouTuber or something like Markiplier, for instance, but you know, stuff changed and just, you know, you start having new opportunities and you start seeing all the choices you have. And it's not just like this one thing you like, but it can be an entirely new different thing. So I really, you know, with like one of my most popular videos with interviewing Dave Pilkey, you know, I actually interviewed him and I found out, you know, I can be really good at this. So I just continued doing it over and over. And then I found a passion I have for it. Wow. So let's talk a little bit about, you mentioned some like gaming stuff. Number one, it's really cool that you're doing the hosting stuff that you are and having those conversations. But two, just like, so video games, I feel like they have such a bad stigma associated with them. Like, oh my God, like kids need to like get outside and they need to like put the video games down. Like, what do you have to say to people who like have a problem with video games? Well, there's a ton of things like, well, well, like with video games, you know, there's multiple things really, because Though video games, yes, it does have some cons, but there's some good stuff with it, you know? Like with me, you know, I've brought like my, like I'm able to do a lot of puzzle solving things. With me excelling in school, I've kind of also used that knowledge for like games and stuff. I mean, that's how I really was as a kid, you know? I just played games, but then I used the game knowledge I got from school and then, you know, game knowledge I got from video games and I put it towards school. And, you know, like kids not going outside, there is other um, ways on how to get like physical, like, 
activity in. I mean, with VR gaming, you're really standing a lot. Beat Saber, you're just slicing blocks. You know, you basically can get a lot of exercise from like VR gaming. Wow. See, I didn't know that. And I think like gaming, so when I was growing up, I played um, WoW, World of Warcraft. Ooh, World of Warcraft. I, I played, that was like the one game I played in like Sims, but like now there's like a million, like the VR games. Like I've never in my life played a game where like you put on a, I don't know, a headset, what have you. And like, you're, like you said, you're slicing stuff. How do you think gaming has like, obviously it's changed a lot, but like, how do you think it's connected people in ways that it normally wasn't? Well, I mean, think about it. Well, originally video games are really like a solo thing, like, you know, with Pac-Man, you know, just really playing by yourself. But video games have gotten more social, really. Like, you know, for example, here's a good example, like World of Warcraft, you know, it's still a fighting game, but also still have a lot of role play and social. And with recently with like some VR stuff, you can, there's a game I go on with VR chat and it's been, you know, really helpful during the COVID pandemic. It basically, it kind of gives you a way of having that, thing we once had in real life, but still, you know, like before COVID, but still being able to experience it in VR and just, you know, being what you want to be. Something like um, Ready Player One, for instance. Okay. Yeah. I've heard of that. Interesting. So, okay. So definitely video games can be helpful as we're kind of learning and discussing right now. Do you ever think that kids, let's talk a little bit about bullying. I don't know if you've ever been bullied, but oh, I feel like I definitely. You've been bullied? You want to talk oh, a little bit? Most about of my, let me see, hold up. Kindergarten to fifth grade. Kindergarten to fifth grade? Yeah, no friends at all. I had imaginary friends. Same ah. I'm so sorry. Are... How, what were the kids doing to you? What were they saying? Uh, I mean, you know, those are during the times where people, it was still during a dark age, I guess, during the time where Navy was from this too I was. But basically, you know, you know, kids think, you know, they can be a bit of jerks at times, you know, with like, oh, you have cooties or you look different or based on how your physique is or something like that. Because they kind of just have like a stature thing of like how like, like how you're above somebody or you're below somebody. That's how it was for me. Mostly I was below and didn't have friends for a while. I mean, I did, but then they left. It would be maybe like a day or so. But yeah, either way, like, you know, it was dark, man, but, you know, I found some hope somewhere near third grade. And it's like, you know, I was a bit, a bit chubby, but then one day it all changed. I want to say the story, but I've already told the story multiple times. Okay, I'll just skim through it. Yeah, a bunch of these um, fourth graders were basically kicked. Like, there was four of them. They were kicking down this um, second grader. And usually that, that would be a normal thing, but, you know, I would ignore it. Because I think, oh, that would be me then. It was more of like a like a do or don't think. But that one day I changed and I was like, I'm going to stand up for them. And basically the biggest kid, I just said, hey, yo, stop doing that. It ain't right, man. And then I got pushed down by the biggest kid, but then something sparked, something connected that I didn't had. Because instead of, you know, just running away, I got up with my broken nose. I basically whipped my nose and I accidentally broke his jaw. He looked like the Iron Giant. <laughs> yeah. And then nobody, like, that, that kid just stopped. Like, they all, like, he was the biggest guy. And I didn't know I had that because I, I was told that I was weak. I would be kicked down, saying I was fat, slow, stuff like that. But then me taking down this guy, they were scared. They knew that they couldn't do that anymore. So they all left, and I helped the kid get back to his class. Wow. So, so, okay. so you're definitely a protector, right? So you stand up to the kids that you know, obviously like fighting, like avoided it all. I don't, yeah, I do not promote fighting at all. It's just, yeah. it was a do or don't situation. And the teachers really, they didn't do much with fighting during that school. They really didn't do anything. God, that's awful. So not only were you like being bullied yourself and then, you know, like you said, it switched and then you're like, I'm going to stand up for someone else. And then, I don't know, you've kind of just been that way ever since. Like, have you ever I don't know. I stopped, it, but I never put my fist up again because I knew what I could do and I just wanted to. I kind of used it as a scare tactic. So in case somebody is in that situation again, I basically, I'm kind of like, I kind of give them like a, hey, don't do that. And I kind of look scary, as some people Got say. It. 
Okay, so scary. Yeah. Things. Understood. Well, that's that's good that you are looking out for you know your fellow classmates and peers. But yeah, any any way to avoid uh, hitting someone. But hey, at least they knew. They're like, we're not gonna mess with this kid ever again because like he might kick our butts. Um, so that's good for you for standing up for someone else. Do you think that like video games helped you get through bullying? Like if you're feeling like really low inside, like was it kind uh, of a release for you? Yes, definitely. I mean, without having friends, really, I mostly just played video games or drew because I, I basically like I just looked up some characters and stuff like anime, for instance, I watched a bit of Pokemon, Dragon Ball. You know, because these characters, like, I kind of related to how they were just low and stuff. And I would just watch them. And, you know, I didn't really have friends. So I just kind of thought of these characters as friends, really. Uh -huh. Kind of the way I got through life. It breaks my heart that you didn't have friends. Hopefully, it sounds like now that you got some good buddies, the ones that you're going to move to L.A. with at some point yeah. get the house. So that makes me happy that you found that support group and you know I struggled with friendships when I was in middle school too and it's like you know sometimes people come and go out of your life but it's good once you find that good small group of people like hold on to that because those are going to be the people that are with you like your ride or die right that's what they always say yeah. um so yeah so I'm glad I'm glad you found that like what can people expect from you what are you working on Mm, well, I mean, I am working on some stuff right now. There's something really cool that I just got. And I'm thinking of making some content about it, but you know, I just gotta keep that a secret for a while till I actually do it. Got it. Got and it. I got I got some stuff up my sleeve that I haven't told anyone, and I've been told like you know how uh, Tom Holland like he accidentally spoiled like lots of stuff in Avengers. Yes. You know that's me, but instead of actually speaking it out, my mom's just like, "You didn't say anything." <laughs> I know it can be easy to do like sometimes it just like rolls and you're like oh no like it's gone and I um yeah no I get that but that's cool so you're working on some exciting stuff and you're 15 so you got plenty of time to like take on the world and like really make an impact but clearly you already are so what advice would you want to give to maybe the younger version of yourself when he was really being bullied and um, what advice do you wish that you could have given yourself back then? Uh, well, here's what I would have said to myself. Um, don't put a label on yourself. Just because people say you're this doesn't mean you're that. I mean, yes, life is tough, but it's only going to get tougher. So the only way you can actually survive is you can't just whimper and ask for help. You got to you gotta step up. You got to be more stronger. And sooner or later, you know, you'll be living good. Don't go to like a dark area, but still be a, you know, just be in the light still, but also still be justiceful. And also just make sure you're not like a, not a bit of a jerk, but still just be a good person. Even though, you know, all these people have done this stuff to you. I mean, your enemies and stuff. But yeah, enemies turn into, you know, frenemies at times and that can change. So even if you put a label on them, it's just the same thing that they did to you. So don't do that. That's powerful. Yeah, labels I think can really kind of destroy friendships, relationships and everything of that nature. So that's good advice. And hopefully someone listening, listening will hear that and be like, oh my gosh, like I need to do that and I need to take his advice. So hopefully you take your own advice. Like I always tell myself, I'm like, yeah, I give really great advice, but sometimes it's difficult for me to take my own advice. So I hope you don't have that problem. <laughs> yeah. Be bold, be you and be blankly honest.